Hello and welcome to our weekly video blog and today on A Vogel Talks Menopause Sarah and I are going to be talking about that brain fog and fatigue. If you like my tips and advice then please subscribe and remember to hit the bell icon. I think brain fog and fatigue are two of the more common symptoms that women come to me with. They don't know how to cope with it, they don't know why it's happening they're not quite sure of the best ways with dealing about it. So Sarah and I are going to have a little chat about our own experiences in, in the hope that these will help you too. But just to clarify, what is brain fog? You know, it, it's such an, an umbrella term and, and we're hearing it a lot in TV programs and, and we're reading about it in, in magazines. So really, kind of brain fog, it's about memory loss, it's about forgetting people's names, it's about forgetting what you were talking about, it's forgetting um, sort of stats that you may have to, to know for work. It can also be just that kind of fu fuzzy feeling that you're just not quite with it, you don't feel on the ball, it takes you an awful lot longer to, to remember what you were going to say. And of course, the classic one, is you go into a room and then you're like, you cannot remember why you went there in, in the first place. When we talk about fatigue, again, that can be a little bit of an umbrella term. So it could be that physical fatigue. So you've slept all night, but you're just so physically tired. You can't do what you want to do. Your exercise regime goes out the window. You're even having to drag yourself into work. But it can also be that mental fatigue where you just can't cope with day-to-day -day stuff. Just thinking about what you've got to do on a daily basis can pull you down and just make you want to cuddle down in the covers and not even get out of bed. So, Sarah, what, what's the brain fog? What, what's your issue with that? Well, for mine, it's hugely cyclical because I'm still getting periods. So I find that week before my period, I'm... I find it really hard to concentrate. I can't parallel park to save my life. My spatial awareness goes out the window and I get really tired. Um, I have to go to bed early and I find that my ability to concentrate in the afternoons is, is it's, it's, I have to work that bit harder to get the work, mm -hmm. to get stuff done. Um, I, what have you found, just, what have you found um, to be useful? For me, okay, I'm postmenopause. Um, it's not an issue now, which is absolutely great. But during the menopause, for me, it was like someone just pulled a sweat. I'd be in the middle of talking to somebody and it felt as if somebody had pulled the plug on my brain. There was nothing, absolutely nothing in there. And it used to really panic me, not, not so much in my work environment. But at that point, I did a lot of workshops and talks and seminars and, and things and I was always panicking that I would do something I'd be doing something like that and just totally forget I would get that black hole moment that's what that's I, quite that's frightening what, I, what I called it yeah so but it was so funny because that never happened and what clicked with me was that a lot of this forgetfulness and your brain being empty is just that as women we don't always physically multitask we have to mentally yeah. multitask so you know I'm talking to you but I'm thinking about what am I going to have for my lunch you know so you, you're, you're thinking about so many different things at once and I think sometimes our brains are like computers if you try and input too much information at once your computer crashes and I realized that that was what used to do me in was if I was thinking about too many things at once. The other thing I realized was that when you forget, when you're talking to somebody and your brain goes blank, you immediately start to panic. And the minute you go, oh, I've forgotten, it sets off an, an adrenaline response. You might start to get the palpitations. You might get a hot flush. So you're going to be embarrassed. Everything wrong is happening at that moment. And I found too, for me, was that I just used to joke and I would go, I'm having a black hole moment, service will be resumed in a minute. And the minute that I laughed and the minute that I relaxed, 
it was like somebody put the switch back on. Okay. So it's little things like that I found. But I think to, to reassure a lot of women with this, it's hormonal. Yeah. And once your hormones balance out again, um, it's a phase that, that disappears for most women, which is good news, I think. I'm finding balancing my blood sugar levels is, is really helping mm. because I have a tendency to um, skip breakfast and have a cup of coffee and that is not working for me anymore. Um, I find if I keep my blood sugar levels stable and I just eat small portions regularly and I don't forget um, to um, j just carry a snack around with me the way I did when my kids were toddlers, I'm finding that's a strategy that's working Brilliant. for me. Yeah. For energy levels, um, to address that afternoon slump and for um, just to keep the cogs rolling and so that I'm not getting dips in energy and in concentration. Um, that seems to be um, my best strategy at the moment anyway. It's a great tip and I'm always recommending snacks. Healthy snacks are, are a really great thing. So what about the fatigue? How, how are you with that at the minute? Are you okay? Um, again, it, 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 it's very much time of the month for me. Um, it's, the, that those days before my period, I find that I just get very physically tired and I just have to go to bed that bit earlier. Um, and I'll feel it when I'm walking upstairs. I'll feel a pull in my muscles. Whereas um, other times in the cycle, it's going to be very much where I actually feel physically sleepy after lunch, particularly if, I've ha if I have a sit down lunch. I find that I, I just get waves of fatigue. But yeah, you know, fatigue um, is a, a, another big one. I found for me, again, I didn't really get it because I would love my food and I can't go long periods without it. So for me, eating little and often is, is, is something that I just I have to do. Otherwise, I just stop still. Um, but I found for me it was more the mental fatigue. And yeah. again, it's in situations where I was having to cope with too many different things at once. And, you know, if you're looking at work, you're looking at family, you've then got other things to do. And again, as women, we're, we're so bad at yeah. saying no. So we're always, you know, somebody says, will you do that? Yes. You know, and at, at work, people would go, Eileen, will you? And I would say yes before I knew what it was. And I just find that sometimes we need to learn to say no in order to preserve our own energy levels. And, and it's a really um, hard one. But again, if I got fatigued, I would just look at what was going on in my life and go, right, do I really need to be doing this at the minute? I'll just say no, take a step back and I'll have a, a you know, a duvet day or something like that just to get my energy back. So, um yeah, good tips. The one thing, though, that really is important with the fatigue is it can be caused by other health issues in the menopause. And we know things like um, low vitamin D, um, low B12, underactive thyroid, um, and low iron. So especially for yeah. um, people like yourself who are in the perimenopause, if you're getting sort of heavy or prolonged periods, you can become anemic really, really quickly. And fatigue is one of the first symptoms of that. So absolutely. And um, uh, for, for me, for me um, I have had periods where the iron dipped a little bit because the periods got quite heavy. And one of the first signs would be things like pins and needles um, and kind of mm -hmm. low, those that low blood pressure feeling when you get up off the chair and you get a yeah, bit dizzy. Yeah. And uh, that definitely is a nutritional deficiency that has to be addressed. Um, the doctor can check, check, you can go to the GP and yeah. get the bloods checked for that. And if your periods are very heavy or close together, um, it's, it's, it's a very good idea to get the bloods checked and get the iron um, checked. Um, and also thyroid, because um, your thyroid gland, again, can share some of the symptoms yeah. as perimenopause, where you can get cold and tired and um, and again, it can cause brain fog as well. So that's another one to check for. Um, I uh, it's uh, just and and general nervous system support. I feel is really important for um, symptoms like brain fog and fatigue, because 
your endocrine system is busy, but your nervous system is affected as well, mm. particularly Absolutely. where yeah. sleep mm -hmm. and stress is an issue. So um, I, I just think anything that supports and nourishes the, um, the nervous system, so B vitamins, a venous sativa, magnesium. magnesium. Yeah, magnesium, absolutely. magnesium. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I find these are lovely staples to keep in the cupboard or to reach for if um, you're having brain fog and fatigue issues. Great tips. I hope you found this interesting. Um, to be honest, you know, Sarah and I could go on for ages. And, and we, we, one of the reasons we did this is because we do um talk about issues that that we're facing ourselves and and see how each of us are, are cope or are learning to cope with all the changes that that are going on if any of you out there have any questions about anything we've talked about today um please do contact us and um until then i'll see you next week for another edition of a vogel talks menopause